Trichy, short for Trichrapalli, was once known as Trichnopoly under the British rule and is situated on the banks of the river Kaveri. The Rockford Temple and the Srirangam Temples are cultural landmarks. Right in the middle of all the city buzz, we have St. John's Church, a calm and peaceful place for meditation and reflection. This is a historical church. Contrary to popular opinion, the British were not responsible for bringing Christianity to India. The primary concern of the English East India Company was trade, trade and more trade. They engaged in controlling law and order situations only to promote their trade. Prior to 1813, missionary work was forbidden in British territory because conversions brought riots and riots meant less trade. Missionaries were responsible for bringing people to Christ in India. These missionaries faced opposition not only from the local populace but also risked being deported by the British. These circumstances formed the backdrop in which St. John's Church came into existence. Hope you're taking notes. Our history lesson starts now. Initially, when the British soldiers were stationed in Trichy, there were no churches or public places of Christian worship. Rooms in the barracks were used for worship in the midst of daily activity. It is easy to forget our history and it is easier to not study it in the first place. How many of us know of Reverend Christian Frederick Schwartz? Reverend uh, Christian Frederick shot who? He did not shoot anybody. Reverend Christian Frederick Schwartz was a German missionary who served in the Danish mission at Trankoba. Simultaneously, the East India Company also employed him as a chaplain, serving the garrisons of Trichinopoly, Tanjore and Palamkota from the year 1762. Oh, what happened after that? Nothing much for the next 27 years till 1799. All the activity of the English garrison was limited to Trichy Fort. And due to the overcrowding, they decided to move out to Warrior. And then? Well, after that, the 19th Dragoons Regiment was brought to Trichy for the Mysore War. And barracks were built for them on higher ground in the cantonment. What do you mean higher ground? You see, Warrior is a low-lying area quite close to the Uyagondam Irrigational Canal. Yeah, I remember. Uh, even in recent times, there have been floods there. Yes, and there was a good deal of sickness in the warrior lines which the people at cantonment were free from. Why are you telling me all of this uh, uh, when we are talking about St. John's Church? You see, when the 19th Dragoon soldiers did not return to Trichy after the war, the soldiers at Warrior were shifted to these empty barracks. The people of the new cantonment wanted a new church closer to their homes. In 1805, the governor recommended appointment of more chaplains to prevent further neglect of public worship and decline of morals. Therefore, the government took initiative at this time to build budget churches that were not architecturally grand but were structurally solid. Okay, go on. A recommendation to build a church was forwarded by the directors of the East India Company to England in 1805. They received a favourable reply only in 1809. In 1811, the building was commenced in the middle of the burial ground. Due to shortage of funds, the engineer had to keep his estimate to build a church for 600 persons for 5,000 pakodas. Bishop Middleton, the first bishop of the Anglican Church in India, based in Calcutta, consecrated the new church in 1816. Hey, uh, you're talking about a budget church which was uh, less than uh, 30,000 rupees. And this does not look like a budget church to me. 
You see, in 1819, Bishop Middleton visited Trichy again. He complained about the unimpressive appearance of the church and wanted a cupola and portico. In 1820, the government sanctioned the additions, and the belfry was added in 1832. the baptismal font the lectern pulpit altar rails and stained glass windows were donated by various persons in memory of church members listen to this one about bishop heber in the year 1826 bishop heber the successor to bishop middleton died while on a visit to trichy he was drowned in a swimming pool and was buried in the sanctuary of our church near the altar and an engraved marble slab inlaid with brass and enamel was placed over his grave this could not be seen by the congregation so in 1885 stained glass was ordered from italy and was placed over the altar now we can see it we can all see the stained glass but tell us about the music in the church at that time in 1826 a pipe organ was purchased from england The pipe organ after a few years of use was given to Christ Church Trichy. Another pipe organ was bought from England. It was damaged during transportation due to a cyclone. It was however repaired and used for many years till it went into repair and was sold to the Tanjo Mission. A reed organ was purchased and this is still in the church today. Uh are there any other people who are buried inside this church there is only one other burial inside the sanctuary an infant who died while the church was under construction the daughter of mr charles lushington of the civil service who helped build the church oh and what happened to the soldiers the british garrison was withdrawn from trichy in 1879 and their place in the barracks was taken by the officials of the southern indian railway The soldiers left behind a vestry fund and a school for the soldiers children and orphans started in 1763. It was called St John's Vestry School after the care of the school was entrusted to the care of St John's Church in 1812. Hey, that was quite a history lesson. Thank you for your patience. Our church has a long and glorious history. As we approach our bicentennial anniversary in a few years, Let us resolve to remain a united and strong congregation as one body in Christ. Let us work for revival in our church by learning to walk in his ways, looking to him alone in all our sorrows and joys.